we're going to start at verse 1. reading from the, well, I'm going to read from the King James Version. That's what we talk to do. <laughs> it came to pass after this also that the children of Moab and the children of Ammon and with them other beside the Ammonites came against Jehoshaphat to battle. Then there came some that told Jehoshaphat, saying, There cometh a great, somebody ought to say great, great, a great multitude against thee from beyond the sea on this side, Syria. And behold, they be in Hazazon Tamar, which is in Gedi. And Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord and proclaimed a fast throughout all Judah. And all Judah gather, gathered themselves together to ask of the Lord help. Even out of all the cities of Judah, they came to seek the Lord. I want to drop down to the 20th verse, I believe, where it says, And they rose early in the morning and went forth into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went forth, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, so shall ye be established. Say established. established. Believe his prophets, so shall ye prosper. Say prosper. prosper. And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed singers unto the Lord that they should praise, say praise, praise. the beauty of holiness yes. as they went out before the army and to say, praise the Lord for his mercy endureth forever. I want to stop right there and talk just a little bit this afternoon on the power of praise and worship. Amen. Hallelujah. God, our prayer is that you will use this earthen vessel of clay, get your glory in this house on today. And God, let somebody be saved, let somebody be delivered, but let us all be changed for the better. And we're going to make sure that you get all of the praise, all of the glory, and all of the honor in the mighty name of your son, Jesus. We pray, and all that love God say, amen. 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 For those who know me, you know that I am a worshiper. Yes, I believe in, as the young folks say, getting it in. Amen. Because I found out something about praise. What's that? What's that? Praise changes the atmosphere. Yes, it, does. it changes your perspective yes. of the circumstances. Yes. And praise has a way of just catapulting you into the next place in God. How many of you believe that on today? Amen. Amen. What has happened uh, throughout history is we've gotten to a place where we've gotten real comfortable in the house of the Lord. Mm -hmm. It was, well, in the Old Testament time, they didn't have no seats. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Didn't have no cushions. That's right. That's right. They stood before the presence right. of the Lord. Right. When they came in, they stood. Yeah. When they prayed, they stood. Yeah. As the choir sang, they stood. And as the minister ministered, they stood. Come on, y'all ain't saying it. And somewhere along the way, we got lost in translation. And what ended up happening was we got comfortable with our carpet and our pad. Y'all ain't saying it. And, and with that, we've gotten laxed with our praise. And when we get laxed with our praise and, and wax old with our traditions, yeah. with how we praise God, mm -hmm. there's no wonder why we find ourselves in the predicaments that we find ourselves in. Come on, y'all ain't saying anything. But listen, it is something in us that desires to praise God because we were created to praise God. Come on, y'all ain't saying anything. We were created to praise God. Do you know, do you not know that we are God's weapon against Satan? Come on. Because what he does is he dwells 
in us and it with, with, the, with the spirit that dwells in us when it agrees with the spirit of God there comes a rejoicing on the inside that just terrifies the devil because it's what he used to do so what the devil does is he creates these atmospheres or he creates these scenarios that causes us to think that we are defeated but I need you to understand that the devil is already a defeated foe the only thing we gotta do is get back to the basics and do what God has ordained us to do I wish I had a prayer church right about here look somebody in the face and tell them really all you gotta do is put a praise on it when, 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 when Jehoshaphat got this word that, you know, things were going well for Jehoshaphat and Judah. They were going pretty good. You ever had stuff going pretty good in your life and then all of a sudden all hell breaks loose? Come on, come on y'all ain't saying anything. You, I mean, you, your daily routine had gotten to be what it was. You got up, you went to work, you got lunch. You try to talk to your boo throughout the day. Come on, somebody. And then in the evening, you came home and you chilled a little bit, looked at a little news, ate a little dinner, said a little prayer, went to bed, and got ready for the next day for the same thing, right? And somewhere along the way in your process of life, up pops the devil with all of his antics and his tricks. But I like what Jehoshaphat did. The first thing that Jehoshaphat would have me to tell y'all on today is we need to learn how to seek God. My friend, my friend, Prophet is Moria Willingham has walked in this house on today and she's got this one saying that we always make fun of her about. She always say, what does God say? Come on, y'all ain't saying anything. I wish I had a praying church right about here. Want somebody ought to look, want somebody in the face and tell them, I know what the doctor said. I, I know what the bill collector said. I know what the bank said. I even know what your friends and enemies said. But what does God have to say about your situation? Come on, I wish I had a prayer church right about here. So you got to learn how to seek God. What, 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 what the words say? Seek him while he may be found. Call on him while he is near. Come on, y'all ain't saying that. Look somebody in the face and tell them you better learn how to seek God. If you're anything like me, in the past I had this horrible habit of calling everybody else and trying to see what they had to say about it first name. And you know what? You know what I found out about friends? They are some naysayers, and they have a they got a funny way of, of putting a bleak look on the situation. Y'all ain't said anything. Come on, y'all ain't. You, you remember when uh, the late Reverend James Cleveland said when he had his heart, when he had that uh, that episode, and he was laying in the hospital. You know, he said he had chest pains all over his body. Come on, y'all ain't said anything. Yeah, somebody gonna catch that by Friday. He had, he had chest pains all over his body, and he said the nurse. He said it was a little girl. Working in the ER said, he ain't gonna make it, is he? Well, Reverend Cleveland said, he raised up off that gurney and said, oh, yes, I'm is. Come on, y'all ain't saying anything. Can I tell you that the devil is trying to tell you you ain't gonna make it? Well, I tell you, act like James Cleveland said, oh, yes, I'm is. I tell you to get indignant and ignorant about that thing and say, oh, yes, I'm is. <laughs> I tell you to high five somebody and tell them I'm an overcomer. Y'all ain't saying that. Y'all don't know nothing about that. Y'all don't know nothing about Thomasville. Moreland Avenue, McDonough, Boulevard. Y'all ain't saying anything. Southeast Atlanta. Hard times. Y'all ain't saying anything. I rode my bike to my girlfriend's house and had to carry it home, baby. Y'all ain't saying anything. I grew up in Thomasville and I know how to fight. I thought I knew how because I'm short. You know, I'm short, man. So I had to fight dirty. Y'all ain't saying anything. Rocks, knives. Come on, y'all ain't saying anything. Come on, Robert. Robert grew up in Thomas you know what I'm saying? So let me tell you something. I thought I knew how to fight until I grew up and got grown and saw this grown fight. This fight, listen, Paul said we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Y'all ain't saying anything. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but it's a war on principles, baby. It's a war on principles. When the president sits up and says, we don't care who ain't got no health care. Y'all ain't saying anything. I wish I had a prayer. 
praying church right about here. Guess what? Saints ain't always had health care anyway. We already we always had somebody to care for our health. Come on, somebody go get that advice. I dare you to shake somebody's hand and tell them I don't worry about health care because I got somebody caring for my health. So, so some came to tell Jehoshaphat, Pastor, you got some enemies coming after you. It's a heap of them. You ever had hell after hell? Oh, I know you have. Because like me, see, in your office, I told you I retired. That's what I named it. But like you, I resigned. Because of some bull. Y'all yeah. ain't saying anything. Yeah. I wish I had a praying church. Anybody in here ever had to go through some junk on your job? No. I wish I had a praying church right about here. Yeah. I got up, I packed my stuff, and I walked up out of there. My family told me don't go back. I went back one time, and it was, like, it was almost like I didn't get it. I got suspended over some stupid stuff. Stupid Go to work early every morning. Got suspended. Rob did too. <laughs> Both of us got suspended. Oh, wow. Then, Juwan, that's his wife right there, Dylan. We got suspended over stupid stuff, and we sitting up there saying, now wait a minute now. We getting up, going to work early, trying to be the good employees. You know what I'm saying? We watching folk rob the company. We watching folk cheat the company. We trying to be good old boys. You know what I'm saying? And got suspended. I finally stood back and said, you know what? That ain't even the devil. That's God. Yeah. He's trying to shift us. Yeah. And we so busy trying to hang on. Uh -huh. Come on, y'all ain't saying anything. That's right. But after I got sat down, Pastor, what ended up happening was I, I, I finally decided I ain't going back. They said, well, you know, we could have suspended you for um, three years. Yeah, three years. That ain't no suspension, that's termination. <laughs> <laughs> then they, they turn around, but we gonna do you a favor. We just gonna suspend you four months. I'm like apples, oranges, ain't that the same thing? <laughs> How many of us in here can go four months without a paycheck? All right, I thought so. So what I'm saying is, so I said, okay, I, I guess what I'm gonna do is, and I kept saying this past time today. I'm like, I ain't Ubering in my Cadillac. I ain't doing that. I ain't Ubering in my Cadillac. I ain't doing that. I ain't putting my Cadillac out there, Uber. I got up and the note came. I told the Cadillac, you might pay for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Us gonna go Uber. Come on, y'all. <laughs> but God fixed it to where I was still able to keep going. Amen. Well, then all this other stuff started going. Yeah, yeah. Some folk in the church got mad. Mm -hmm. They got mad because somebody got sick. And I couldn't come see him because I was at work. <laughs> they laughing at me, Pastor. You ever had some folk to get mad at you over yeah. some silly stuff? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. Lord, this dream and laugh. They was mad at me. <laughs> but, but I couldn't take the 18 women. I wish I had about three people that'll look somebody in the face and say, I gotta pay my bills. That's right, that's right, that's right. That's right. And then you know what the folks say, what church folks say when the preacher can't pay his bill? He need a job. Right, right, exactly. They sure do. That's what they say. Yeah. So anyway, <laughs> I had all this stuff that started coming. Well, this is what happened to Jehoshaphat. Yeah, yeah, all yeah. this stuff kept coming at him. Yeah, yeah. They coming at you. Yeah. They coming for you. They coming at you just like you. You got stuff coming at you. You got bills you got to pay. You got children acting stupid. You got, come on, y'all ain't saying anything. You got co-workers that have lost their mind. And then you got church folk that just don't know how to act like church folk all that. <laughs> Go ahead, Pastor. Immature. Yes, yes, Stuff coming at you. Yes. 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 He said they almost here. Yeah. They're at in Gideon. That's right. Uh -huh. Jehoshaphat sought the Lord. Uh -huh. 
And then he made everybody else around him pray. That's right. Okay, let me stop right there. That's it. Can I tell you that you don't need folk around you that don't know how to pray? I think the problem with a lot of us is we don't have enough praying folk around us. As a matter of fact, I dare you to decree in your circle, everything in this circle that don't know how to pray, I need you to get away. Come on, y'all ain't saying anything. Come on. Because when you go to the doctor and you get that negative report, you don't need somebody. Come on, come on, come on. Come on. Ain't that right, Dr. Wonder? Pastor. Ain't that what we need? We need somebody that know how to get a prayer through. When you're trying to figure out how you're going to make it from stage one to stage B, come on, y'all ain't saying anything. You need somebody that knows how to call on the next young folks. You need some more praying friends. I just told my daughter, if your friends don't know how to pray, if your friends can't motivate you, if your friends can't inspire you, if your friends can't help you, guess what? They ain't your friends. I'm going to say that again. Excuse my grammar. They ain't your friends. Bible says that a friend must show himself friendly. Well, y'all ain't saying this. And it ain't friendly if all you got is something negative to say. Put a little something in the pot. Even if it ain't nothing but prayer. All right. So they prayed, and as they started praying and they started seeking the Lord, let me tell you this: I'm almost done. You can't talk to God and not expect an answer. Come on, y'all ain't saying that. You can't talk to God and not expect an answer, because when you call on Him, He will answer. How many of you know that He will answer? And how many of you know that He will show up? I tell you, the high five street people are telling He'll show up. And what I like about God is He don't show up empty handed either, baby. I wish I had a praying church right about here. God said to Haziel, he said, listen, run down there and tell Jehoshaphat, don't worry about Jehoshaphat. I said, hold up, listen. King Jehoshaphat and all ye inhabitants of Judah. Yeah, right. He said, listen, tomorrow, you won't even have to fight. Now, I'm going to pause right there, put a finger in that. Look somebody in the face and tell them, guess what? You ain't even got to fight this one. <laughs> oh, good God Almighty. What, what do you mean you ain't got to fight it? You ain't got to put your dukes up. You ain't got to sweat it. You ain't got to tremble. You don't, and God knows you don't need to be scared because God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Learn how to go to sleep at night. If you can't sleep at night, it's because you got the wrong folk around you. I wish I had a praying church right about here. I got bills, I got to pay, but I still sleep at night. I wish I had a praying church right about here. My bank account don't look like I'm used to it looking, but I go to sleep at night. And I sleep real good because I learned that he that keepeth Israel neither slumbers nor sleep. Now my God daddy said this, now if he neither slumbers nor sleep, ain't no need both of us being up. One of us need to go to bed. Y'all ain't saying that. Come on, come on, y'all ain't saying that what Rip Buffer said. He said, go to bed, I go to bed. Look somebody in the face and tell him, get some rest. Well, how do you do that? Well, he said, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. He said, I'll give you rest. rest. Yes. <laughs> That's the word. So, he said, you won't even have to fight this. Mm. Auntie Jeannie, you ain't got to fight this. That's right. Anybody else in here that's going through something, mm -hmm. you ain't got to fight this. My mama's only sister had, 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 uh, has to go have a, a biopsy on, on her other breast. She just, she's a 12 year cancer survivor. Hallelujah. And after 12 years, they telling her she got to go back and have another biopsy. Mm -hmm. I dare you to look somebody in the face and tell him if he did it before, that's what, that's what Dr. Wonders told me back there. If God did it before, he can do it again. See, God ain't like us. Once we do something for you one time, we don't want to hear from you no more. I wish I had a praying church right by here. But how many of us, and the biggest lie that's ever been told on God is that he's a God of a second chance. No, God is a God of multiple chances. Because I messed my second one up long time ago. And he gave me a third chance. Then I messed that one up. Tomorrow, you won't even have to 
the fight. Because the battle is not yours, it's the Lord's. As a matter of fact, the devil don't even want you. He's trying to use you to get back at God. He sees how God is blessing you. He sees how God is using you. He sees how your life is a testimony to us. And what he's trying to do is, he's trying to jack you up so you'll stop shouting, you'll stop talking, you'll stop praising. I wish I had somebody in here that don't mind saying, I refuse to let the devil steal my praise. When they got ready to go for battle, Jehoshaphat said, I think I, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to do something a little different. See, when they went to war, when Israel and Judah would go to war, they would always send their mighty men of valor. That's right. That's right. That's right. Then they had a second crew that would come in and just pick up, you know, the pieces. Right. 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 But this particular time, Jehoshaphat said, you know what? I hear what the Lord is saying. He said, see, because the last folk that would, the last thing they would do was celebrate. Bah. I wish I had a preacher. That was the last thing they would do was celebrate. Jehoshaphat said, we're going to turn it around. I wish I had a prayer church right about here. He said, we ain't going to wait till the battle is over. We're going to shout right now. As a matter of fact, I wish I had about three people that's going through something right now. That don't mind to get somebody in the face and tell them, I'm not going to wait till the battle is over. I'm going to go ahead and celebrate right now. I'm gonna celebrate right now. I'm not gonna wait till I get the car. I'm gonna celebrate right now. I'm not gonna wait till the man comes. I'm gonna celebrate right now.
what happened in that text. Jehoshaphat put the praise and worship ahead of every night. And they said, oh, give thanks unto the Lord. 